Hey YouTube, good morning. Um, I have a gentleman coming to pick up uh, two queen cells this morning, and I figure I would just run through some of my queen rearing equipment that I use, uh, just to kind of go over a few discussions and, and show you guys what I use so you can make your own decisions if you want to get into this. I use two methods, um, and just basically I use all the different equipment that's out there, and I kind of go back and forth on my favorites. Jay-Z BZ cups are what I'm uh, delivering today. These are little plastic cups that have a nub on the bottom and they just fit into these rails. Um, they're very inexpensive. You can make these rails out of wood. You can buy these uh, made out of plastic. Uh, I don't know which one I prefer yet, but they both work. Having plenty of extras is plenty. And you put these cups in there and you graft the queens. They hang upside down just like that. That's the way this works. The other system is the Nico system. The Nico system uses a little bit more equipment. And honestly, I, I've been frustrated by the variances of equipment. You know, if you go out and I can't show you all the Nico system because honestly, most of it's out in the uh, in the cell builder right now. But on my 3D printer, I've started printing some of these parts that help me. Um, and and I, that, that's another fascination I have is using my 3D printer to create little plastic parts that tweak them like I want. But it's got a base, it's got a cup, and then inside the cup, it's got a, the cell that's replaceable, the cell cup. And the thing that's designed is these roller cages are designed to go on here also. So if the queen hatches out, she's already in the roller cage. The JZBZ system doesn't have a method of using these roller cages because as you can see, there's nothing to attach onto. So I couldn't put this in my hive. Um, now, after a queen cell hatches, if I have a queen cell in my incubator, I can set these JZBZ cups on top of the roller cages, but it requires a little bit more timing to ensure that your incubator is ready to go and you pull the cells off before they hatch. And I'll show you that a little bit more in a minute. Um, cell protectors, these are really, really cheap and they're easy and they're very low insurance to ensure that your uh, cells don't um, you know, get chewed down by the workers or perhaps by another queen before they hatch. Now, if you have multiple queens in there and they hatch out, they're gonna fight to the death until there's only one at some point. Um, but these are, are good for both transport and ensuring that the workers don't break down the sides of the cell. And I'll show you how to put these in there in a minute. They have two different styles. This one has forks on both sides and this one has a fork on, on one side. This style works better on natural comb without foundation because as you can see, if you were to try to push this in to a, a frame of foundation, these forks don't go in quite as far. Uh, and this style squeezes really good in between two frames and kind of gets a grip on both sides. So I think I've kind of preferred this one. And if you look, they're a little bit longer also uh, than, the, than the longer prong shot. Just some, uh, some thoughts on that. I do have a little... Um, setup I've created for my grafting. I'll show you. I created, you can buy these too, but you know, if you've got some basic woodworking skills, it's just a frame rest um, that sets right here. And imagine this is your grafting frame with all of your larva on it. This sets here and leans against that at the right angle so that my light overhead is looking straight down into the cells. And then my uh, cell bars would just go right here in front and then I use the Chinese grafting tool because I prefer this plunger that, that pulls the larva off of the, uh, the reed and, and you just graft like this. This frame rest really, really helps um, if you're doing it on a table. Now, if you're grafting in the field or something like that, you might need to create a little bit different setup, but you can make one of these, you can buy them. Um, it's not very much. The, the only trick that I would say to it is look up the math on the angle a cell is tilted up and try to kind of match that a little bit based on the lighting that you have available. I also do use magnification. This is my method of magnification for looking for the larva. Uh, over 50, my eyesight is not what it used to be. Um, <clears throat> these are queen cages that uh, are JZBZ queen cages that are designed for shipping. There's a lot of different methodologies of shipping queens. These are cheap little plastic ones. This little cup comes off of here and then this opens up. Well, it broke off. You can see it's cheap plastic. This is designed to be hinged on here. Let me show you another one that's new. See how it's hinged right there? And then it closes up and goes in here. This tube is designed for queen candy. Uh, and here's my queen candy. I make up, it's just powdered sugar. Uh, and some people use honey, some people use corn syrup. I prefer to use honey. The pliability of your queen candy is the most important part. It should feel like Play-Doh, not too sticky. If it's too sticky, when it gets hot here in Jacksonville, this will ooze and melt, and then it, it'll melt down and actually change the release time of the candy in the tube. 
So it's, it's not an exact science, but the best description I could use is Play-Doh. A little bit tacky, but not sticky. Um, and keep on adding sugar or uh, liquid, the, the honey, until you get that pliability just right. So that's queen candy. That's th these are transporting virgins. Uh, I do have a couple other things I'll show you. These are other style queen transportation cages. Uh, you can make these. This is just wood with a um, Forstner bit that drills these holes in here. And then you have to drill a hole in either side for queen candy and the cork and the little 1 8 hardware cloth on top. These are um, a little bit more of the way commercial bees are, are, are transported. Uh, and this is called a California cage. It's just even smaller. Uh, one end on, on that side where the candy plug goes and then just a couple of attendants in there. If you're transporting queens, you should also have a, a few attendants. You should have some queen candy and don't forget to water them. Watering your, your queens is important and it's a little bit overlooked. They do get a little bit of moisture from the honey in here, so it's not the end of the world, but a couple of drops of water is also something to consider. Okay, uh, let's go into the incubator. I'm just gonna take you over here real quick just so you can kind of see my incubator set up. This is nothing fancy. This is just something I got from Tractor Supply. It's made for chicken eggs. You see, I do have my dates on here. So I got grafted date. This batch right here was grafted on the 11th and this is gonna hatch on Thursday the 23rd. So this gentleman that's picking them up needs to get them into a hive before then. I also, just another thing, I keep water with a little Swedish cloth in here to keep the humidity up. I have my temperature set at 92 degrees and here's my cell bar. And we are at the point right now where we're beyond the sensitive stage. And let's go back over into the light. So I can move these cells um, fairly safely now. Uh, you can see it just, I've already sold a few of these, but these are really, really good looking cells. That's just pretty much what you want. Um, and to the benefit, I also didn't get any webbing in between them. But this is what a JZBZ cup looks like when a cell is aborted. You can see a little bit of wax on the edge. They, just, they started it, but then they aborted it and uh, they didn't finish it. Could have been not enough nurse bees or maybe something they didn't like about it. But I'm selling two of these to this gentleman today. And what I'm going to show you is I just take them. And when you pull these out, you just give a little bit of a twist. Obviously, still always being gentle. And you can always look in the top to see all the royal jelly in there. That, that's great. That means there was more royal jelly than she needed. And I just nudge this into the cell protector and just kind of push it down a little bit so the wax kind of sticks it. And you see how that JZBZ cup and the cell right on top just is nice and protected. So now this cell is protected uh, and is ready for transport. Obviously, um, you still want to be a little bit gentle with them. And I'm looking for some cleaner cups than those. You can see these things come by the hundreds and probably won't go through all these in a lifetime um, and then this cell right here lots of royal jelly in there and we'll just slide that in there and that is two cells ready for transport and they will just be put inside the hive and when you put a queen cell inside of a hive you want to put it right on the brood uh, above or into the brood frame so that they'll be kept warm in case you got any cool nights coming I think for the next few days here in Jacksonville, we're going to be highs in the 80s and lows in the in the low 50s. So we're really out of the woods this week for any sort of cold snap. I'm just going to put these cells back in the incubator. Okay, so that's all I really wanted to show you is just a little bit of the equipment I use, uh, how I do it. I know this is a little bit of a mess, but sometimes this is how I operate um, with what is going on last. Let me know if you got any questions, if you had any thoughts about the queen rearing equipment I use. Um, and I'm selling these two cells today for somebody in here in Jacksonville that wants to make some splits. Have a great day.